today I went to the studio, set up the workspace, and was ready for my client. Unfortunately, she didn't show up without informing me. On the spur of the moment, I decided to tattoo myself since the workspace was already set up and I was already at the studio. So I picked one of my wanna-dos and tweaked it a bit so it would fit a free spot on my foot. Of course, I had to find a spot that I could easily reach since I was tattooing myself. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the process again, and I can also tell you how painful the spot was. Spoiler, it was painful. I picked the right spot on my body and printed out the correct size. Naturally, it's a bit more difficult to place the stencil on yourself, but luckily I managed to get it pretty well right away. But now let's get started. Because I've been getting feedback in recent videos that you prefer when most of the footage is in time-lapse, with occasional real-time sequences, I've done the same in this video. Of course, I'm starting with the lines again here, using an 11-round liner and a 3-round liner. At the beginning, I found it a bit difficult to tattoo myself, as I was making some of the lines too hesitantly. Especially with the 11 round liner, it's important to make the lines with consistent pressure rather than hesitantly. At the beginning, I sometimes had to go over a line twice, which isn't a big deal. The consistent pressure also applies with the 3 round liner, though with this one, of course, you have to use less pressure. And I wanted to briefly come back to the topic of today's no-show client. This is often very unfair to the tattoo artist, as I had spent over an hour the day before drawing her design. I think a no-show is the most disrespectful thing you can do to your tattoo artist. But let's not let this fool hold us up any longer. In the real-time sequences, you can see how slowly and evenly I actually draw the lines. I had to really push myself at times because the area next to the knee is quite painful, and I'm a bit of a crybaby. Since I'm tattooing myself, I did a few things differently than I would when tattooing a real client. For example, after doing the lines on the upper part, I immediately started filling in the black areas. This is simply because it's faster, and I know it's more comfortable for me. I closely monitor the stencil the entire time, and if I feel like part of the stencil might fade, I go back to doing the lines. As long as I'm just filling in the black areas, I make sure not to touch the stencil lines, and that works pretty well. I use a 15 Magnum Soft Edge for filling, and sometimes the 11 Round Liner for smaller areas. For filling in lines, I use a filling black, and for the fine lines with the three round liner, I use a shading black. Have you ever tattooed yourself? I tattooed myself at the very beginning of my tattoo career, and it looks terrible. Feel free to write in the comments if you've ever tattooed yourself and what it turned out to be. I'm continuing with the 11 round liner for areas where I can't quite reach with the 15 Magnum Soft Edge. Today, it's a bit more difficult to reach this spot because I can't completely twist my body to get to it. That's why I ended up filling in more areas with the 11 round liner today. I'll be adding a light color to the gaps in between the black areas afterward. A bright yellow tone. It has to be a very bright color so that the black doesn't blend in and you can still see the spacing well even after it heals. A white color would also perfectly fit. I'm already starting to go over the stencil lines again, as they're starting to fade a little. What I didn't mention before about the lines is that I sometimes only scratch in the finer lines within the design, since black areas will go in between anyway. I do this sometimes to save time, as I'll have to go to the edge with the magnum or the 11 round liner to achieve a nice result. I'd also like to say a few more words about the design. It is a typical neo-traditional motif, with both thick and finer lines. Additionally, I have incorporated elements of Art Nouveau, which has recently gained a special place in the tattoo industry. It is characterized by organic, flowing forms, 
floral motifs, and intricate ornaments. I particularly love how it adds even more lightness to the neo-traditional style, which is already quite playful. With its curved lines, Art Nouveau is also perfect for adapting designs to specific parts of the body. If you like, I'd be happy to show you in a future video how I adapt rough ideas to body shapes. This would likely be more of a preparation tutorial. After all, the preparation is just as important as the tattooing itself. As you can see, we're almost finished with the black areas in the design. I'll thoroughly clean the needle, the 11 round liner, and fill in the lines and gaps with yellow ink. I decided to start with the yellow right after the black. I'm only doing this because I can cover the ornament with a protective film for the remaining work. Preventing any black ink from mixing into it. After that, you need to work more carefully to ensure no black goes over the yellow. As that would be a serious mistake. The black would stain the yellow. In terms of pain, it's always easiest to finish as much as possible in one area, so you don't have to go back to the same spot later. For this, I mainly use circular motions with the 11 round liner. Once the ornament is finished, I'll wrap it in film as discussed and apply Vaseline beforehand, which also helps prevent ink from getting onto the design. When I have completely wrapped the design, I finish the lines so that the stencil can't fade anymore. I also fill in the remaining black areas right away. With the flowers, you can again see the typical thick outlines and finer ones in the middle. Since I don't want to constantly change the needle, I first complete the part with the 11 round liner and then switch to the 3 round liner. Of course, this only works because the stencil holds well. I think it's always a great feeling when the stencil is finally fixed, when you know that nothing can slip anymore. I clean the 11th round liner needle again and move on to the yellow areas that still need to be filled. If you have any design or tutorial requests for the next videos, just leave them in the comments and I will gladly consider them. Filling in the yellow areas at that point, especially near the back of the knee, was already really painful because the skin was very irritated. In moments like these, I always admire my clients who can endure lying still for several hours. I'm now reaching for the 15 soft edge magnum for the pink and the flower. For this, I'm using a mixture of a pink skin tone. For the shading here, I'm only using one color because I think it fits this design perfectly. We're now coming to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.